Three days before this cabinet meeting in November, the Prime Minister had announced a second lockdown. He had been very reluctant, fearing the damage to the economy of closed businesses and shuttered shops. In fact, he was so unhappy after agreeing to it, he's alleged to have said he'd rather let the bodies pile high in their thousands than one day have to announce a third lockdown. Picking his way through the mess on the campaign trail yesterday, Boris Johnson denied ever saying that, and today his ministers have backed him up. He has said no, that he didn't use those words, didn't say that. What I do know is the Prime Minister's been focused on that important balance about protecting lives and uh, protecting livelihoods. Matt Fowler's father, Ian, died from Covid last April. Along with other bereaved families, Matt's been campaigning for a full inquiry into the government's handling of the pandemic. It seems that there has been an attitude of um, refusal to lock down, despite the danger that it showed. Um, if the Prime Minister has been making those comments in the run-up to a third wave, then it's a dagger in the heart to all the people that have a lost uh, friends, family, loved ones um, uh, from that point onwards. Separately, the Prime Minister's under pressure to give full details of who paid for the redecoration of his Downing Street flat. Number 10 says he's paying for that now, but it's unclear if at the start he received an undeclared loan to do it. Labour say all this adds up to sleazy government. Fighting for honesty, integrity in public life is a principle we should all fight for, because the British public deserve honesty from our politicians. So far, we've not had that from Boris Johnson. And if he's prepared to lie about that, what else is he prepared to lie about? Has the Prime Minister broken the rules, Mr Raab? No. No, says the Foreign Secretary, leaving a Cabinet meeting where the Prime Minister said the public wanted the government to deliver on core commitments. That may well be true, but the more that's raked up, the harder that becomes. Andy is in Downing Street now. Andy, Boris Johnson is also a writer, of course, and is known for his use of language. Perhaps, though, it's that extravagant use of words which is now raising some very tricky questions. Yes, is his love of the colourful phrase, Sean, getting him into trouble now. Now, we should be absolutely clear, Downing Street is still saying he did not use that specific phrase about letting the bodies pile high in their thousands. They are saying he never said that. A bit more ambiguous about another phrase which he allegedly used, where it said that he said he was prepared to let the virus rip rather than impose further lockdowns. Now, his official spokesman was asked three times today, did he say that? Each time the response was not clear, rather ambiguous. So people are drawing their own conclusions on that front. I suppose we should say this would be in the context, as Downing Street would say, that the Prime Minister was concerned about the damage to the economy lockdowns would do. You heard that echoed in the words from uh, Therese Coffey there, where she said he was balancing lives and livelihoods. So whether these words are cutting through, these phrases are cutting through to the public, we'll wait to see. But certainly it adds an extra dimension on top of all the other issues right now, which mean that Boris Johnson is not in a very comfortable position.